Ever wondered what makes Paris the city of love and lights? It starts with the Eiffel Tower, the symbol of Paris. Shimmering in the heart of Paris, the Eiffel Tower stands tall, a testament to French ingenuity, resilience, and a pinch of audacity. But this iron lattice tower, now a beloved symbol of France, was not always held in such high esteem. Quite the opposite, in fact. The Eiffel Tower was conceived and built for the 1889 Exposition Universelle, or World's Fair, held in Paris to commemorate the 100th year anniversary of the French Revolution. The man behind the tower, Gustave Eiffel, was not just an engineer, but a visionary. His design for the tower was revolutionary, using iron to create a structure that would stand more than a thousand feet tall, eclipsing everything else in the Parisian skyline. The construction of the tower was no small feat. It took two years, two months, and five days. An achievement in itself, given the technological constraints of the time. More than 7,000 tons of iron were used, held together with over two and a half million rivets. Despite the scale of the project, remarkably, not a single life was lost during construction, a testament to Eiffel's meticulous planning and attention to safety. But when the Eiffel Tower was unveiled, it was met with widespread criticism. Many Parisians considered it an eyesore, an iron skeleton that marred the city's classical beauty. There were even calls for its demolition. But Eiffel, undeterred, defended his tower with passion. He believed it exemplified the technological progress of the era. As the years passed, the initial disdain for the Eiffel Tower faded. It stood firm, surviving wars, weather and time, and slowly but surely, the Parisians grew to love it. It became a symbol of the city, a beacon of light that could be seen for miles around. Today, the Eiffel Tower is more than just a tower. It's a symbol of love, a beacon of hope, and a testament to human ingenuity. It's a place where lovers propose, where dreams are realized, and where millions of visitors each year stand in awe of its grandeur. The Eiffel Tower, once criticized for its design, is now a beloved symbol of French ingenuity and a beacon of romance. Next on our journey is the Louvre, the world's largest art museum. This magnificent testament to human creativity started its journey as a fortress in the late 12th to 13th century under Philip II. A symbol of royal power, it stood guard over Paris, its thick stone walls whispering tales of knights and nobility. Yet as the centuries rolled on, the fortress evolved, reflecting the changing times. Transformed into a royal palace in the 14th century, it became a stage for the grandeur of the French monarchy. However, it was in the 18th century that the Louvre truly began its transformation into the art haven we know today. From royal fortress to palace, and finally, to a sanctuary of art, the Louvre's journey mirrors the evolution of Paris itself. The museum now stands as a beacon of culture, housing thousands of works of art, from the enigmatic Mona Lisa to the majestic Venus de Milo. The Louvre, housing thousands of works of art, is a testament to the enduring appreciation of beauty in Paris. Moving on from the Louvre, we find ourselves in the Latin Quarter. This vibrant neighborhood, nestled in the heart of Paris, is steeped in history. Back in the Middle Ages, it was the hub of educational life in Paris, and it remains so to this day. As we meander through its narrow, winding streets, we're walking in the footsteps of some of the greatest minds of the medieval period. Scholars from across Europe flocked here to study at the University of Paris, one of the oldest universities in the world. This is where Latin was the common language of academia, hence the district's name, the Latin Quarter. Today, the Latin Quarter continues to house institutions of learning, including the prestigious Sorbonne University. But it's not just about academia. The Latin Quarter is also a cultural and artistic hotspot. Bookstores, quaint cafes, art galleries and theatres fill its streets, creating a bohemian vibe that's hard to resist. The Latin Quarter with its bohemian charm remains a hub of intellectual and artistic life in Paris. Leaving the Latin Quarter we ascend to Montmartre, a large hill known for its artistic history. Montmartre is more than just a hill, it's a world of its own, characterized by its bohemian and artistic spirit. This spirit was particularly alive during the Belle Epoque, a golden age at the turn of the 20th century, when Montmartre was the beating heart of artistic creativity in Paris. 
Many renowned artists, including Pablo Picasso, Vincent van Gogh, and Henri Matisse, were drawn to this vibrant neighborhood. They worked in and around Montmartre, finding inspiration in its bustling streets and eclectic mix of people. Their studios became the birthplace of many modern art movements, from Impressionism to Fauvism. Even today, Montmartre retains its artistic charm, with local artists setting up their easels each day in the lively Place de Tertre. Amid the cobblestone streets and charming cafes, the spirit of the Belle Epoque still lingers. Montmartre, with its artistic spirit, gives Paris its bohemian heart. Descending from Montmartre, we arrive at the Champs-Élysées, leading to the Arc de Triomphe. Often hailed as the most beautiful avenue in the world, the Champs-Élysées is a two-kilometer stretch of grandeur and elegance, lined with lush horse chestnut trees, luxury boutiques, and cafes that have seen centuries. But the Champs-Élysées is more than just a pretty face. It's a living testament to the history of France. Commissioned by Louis XIV in the late 17th century, it was transformed into a fashionable avenue during the reign of Napoleon III. Indeed, it was Napoleon Bonaparte who played a pivotal role in the creation of the avenue's crowning jewel, the Arc de Triomphe. Following his victory at Austerlitz in 1805, Napoleon promised his men, you will return home through arches of triumph. He commissioned the Arc de Triomphe the following year, though he would never live to see its completion. Imposing and majestic, the Arc stands at the western end of the Champs-Élysées, a symbol of military might and national pride. Its intricate reliefs depict triumphant scenes of war and peace, while the names of French victories and generals are etched into its surface. Beneath it lies the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, an homage to the unidentified dead of the two world wars. But the Arc de Triomphe is more than a monument to the past. It's a beacon of continuity, linking the old with the new. Every Bastille Day, a grand military parade marches down the Champs-Élysées, passing under the Arc in a continuation of Napoleon's promise. And every year, the avenue transforms into a celebration of lights for the holiday season, a spectacle that draws visitors from around the globe. The Champs-Élysées and the Arc de Triomphe, symbols of French glory, add to the grandeur of Paris. They embody the city's enduring spirit, its history, and its timeless allure. And they remain, as always, a testament to the triumph of the human spirit over time and history. Our journey ends at the Notre Dame Cathedral, a masterpiece of French Gothic architecture. This iconic edifice, standing tall in the heart of Paris, is a testament to human resilience and artistic brilliance. Constructed between the 12th and 13th centuries, Notre Dame is an embodiment of historical grandeur. It's a place where centuries-old stories are etched in stone, each sculpture narrating a tale of its own. Known for its intricate stone carvings, stunning stained glass windows, and its majestic bell towers, it's no wonder Notre Dame has inspired countless artists, writers, and musicians over the centuries. This cathedral has seen the rise and fall of empires, survived wars, and even devastating fires. Yet it remains an enduring symbol of Paris, a beacon of hope, and a testament to the unwavering spirit of the city. Notre Dame, with its awe-inspiring architecture, encapsulates the spirit of Paris, a city of love and lights. We hope you've enjoyed this exploration of a few of the many breathtaking sights of Paris. Like and subscribe to be notified of more inspiring travels as we visit interesting and breathtaking places around the world.